Hello, welcome to this exciting tutorial on media queries. Now, I'm going to break this down one step at a time to share with you how important and how easy media queries are to put on your website to make flexible, fluid, responsive design for all devices. Media query basically is based on CSS. It's a CSS rule to your HTML tags or HTML5 tags. So we're going to break this down one step at a time. Now, what I want to share with you, which is very important to understand, is we're going to use Dreamweaver because Dreamweaver will do most of the heavy lifting with media queries so you don't have to sit there and pound out code from scratch. So here's an example of a site, mediaqueries.es. Now, if you'll notice that this site here, it's pretty clever what they did here. It's media queries, but it's a .es site. And I think that's Ecuador, Salvador, who knows? I don't know what the ES stands for, but it's darn pretty clever if you ask me. Okay, so let's get started here. If you scroll through this site, you will see that there's different versions of the site for different devices. So as an example, this could be a desktop device. This is probably an iPad device, possibly a mini iPad device in an iPhone or a smaller device that's 320 pixels wide. Now, what I want to share with you is that we're going to do a complete breakdown of how to build these sites using media queries. More importantly, how to add media queries in addition to your response to design, static HTML or dynamic HTML tied to PHP and MySQL. I'm also going to share with you my techniques for doing media queries with WordPress. So this is going to be a very inclusive, very straightforward course on working with media queries. So as an example, this particular site right here, this TNW, the next web, is basically built in WordPress. Now, I happen to be working with Firefox, but of course you can use whatever browser you want. From a development standpoint, I like to work with Firefox because it has some built-in features that I like a lot. One is I can turn my CSS styles off. Now what that does, that gives me a good view on how this markup was structured. Basically, this is just the content. Content on a responsive design or basically a professionally laid out site that does not have tables, which we don't deal with. The content would basically flow from top to bottom. So I'm just going to go back to view again and put the CSS back on. So as an example, if I resize this window here, notice what happens. So as I get smaller and smaller, pay close attention typically to the menu choices because the menus will basically collapse in most well-planned out media query CSS based responsive fluid grid, fluid design, responsive websites. So as I get smaller with this, notice that it turns, it's right now a three column. Now it's still remaining three columns and now it jumps into a two column. Now this is probably for a laptop, maybe 13 inch monitor, 15 inch monitor size. If I scroll down even further, you'll see this jumps even further still. It gets smaller until it makes a jump. Now notice the menu, once I change from this view, look up here for a second. Once I change from this view, to that size, the menu choices became similar to what media similar to what jQuery does. So this becomes a colossal menu. And of course, I will share with you how to do that. So I get all the way down to a possibly mini iPad or a tablet, maybe Samsung tablet. And if I get all the way down to my iPhone size, it's very flexible, very fluid. Now, fluid grid flexibility is based on percentages. And what it does, if I could share with you, so uh, if you slept through fourth grade math class, I want to share with you some basic principles of how fluid designs work. Fluid grid responsive design works with percentages and percentages for font sizes rather than say my font is 100%, 200%. A font size unit of measurement would typically for responsive design be a unit of measurement called M space, E-M. In E-M, literally listen to the word M. It's equivalent to the capital M of that particular typeface. So as an example, a browser defaults to 16 pixels. A browser defaults to 16 pixels by default. So does Dreamweaver defaults to 16 pixels. More specifically, Dreamweaver and browsers default to 16 pixels times Roman. That's the default typeface without creating a rule for the body tag. So as an example, 16 pixels equals 1M. So basically 1M is equivalent to 16 pixels. So I'm just going to basically clear that and type in 1. Now let's say as an example that I have an H1 tag that I'm going to set at say 24 pixels. So I'm going to clear that. And I want an H1 tag that is 24 pixels, but I want to know the M equivalent. Well, let's understand this. If you slept through whole number math, guys, in fourth grade, this could potentially hurt your brain. 
We don't want to do that, but I just want to share this with you. So what I could do is take 24 divided by 16, because 16 is my base font, 16 pixels equals 1M by default. And that equals 1.5 M's. So therefore, by default, a H1 tag is 50% bigger than my body copy, which by default is 16 pixels. Now again, for desktop publishing, I'm sorry, for web development, you should work with everything is pixel-based, not point-based. Desktop publishing is point-based. There are 72 pixels to an inch. So therefore, half inch would be 36 pixels. Half of that would be 18 pixels. So as an example, if you wanted a typeface that was a quarter inch tall, that has 18 pixels. So if you say 18, so if I say 18 divided by 16, therefore that would be 1.125 M spaces. Okay, so I just want to share that kind of philosophy with you on how we can basically regulate our font size and also our width size using percentages and M spaces. So let's go back here for a second. We're now going to go, again, this site was built in WordPress. So this course is going to include how to build sites with media queries using WordPress, or basically how to put media queries inside your WordPress document. So let's go to this time.com, timemagazine.com, and notice that this is basically a three column layout. It's a wider content area here. So this is the second most important, and this is the secondary information. So if I go and resize this, again, pay attention to up here on top, but what's happening with media queries is media queries is telling the browser to basically resize this based on your rule structure. So as this gets smaller, notice that the, the uh, columns are proportionally staying the same, but it's still three columns. So as an example, this is probably going to be a, this is a large 27 inch monitor that I'm viewing this on, iMac. So this is a very large screen full width site. Well, actually, it's, it is margin space to the left and right. So if I scroll down to about here, say a, a laptop size 13 inch monitor, it still retains its sizing for three columns, but then it makes a jump to two columns. So it goes from this to this to this. Now it's two columns. If I go down even further, it's still staying two columns. But watch what happens to my menu choices. So a lot of the things in the menus disappear because they become a collapsible menu. And if I go all the way down to, say, a mini iPad or an iPhone, so this is basically what I'll see on an iPhone. Notice the picture scaling as well. Okay, so let's go back a few steps. So I just want to share with you a very important philosophy to understand. Do not confuse rules with tags the markup is still there i still have my h1 tags and my div tags and my header tags that remains consistent now if you're not sure about that we're not going to go into great detail in this video series on understanding the difference between tags versus rules i have a separate video series for that on udemy.com now if you have my all access passive course you have access to that particular course in all my courses if you don't have my all access pass email me i will hook you up with a good deal on an all access pass which is lifetime for all my current roughly 30 videos on udemy as of today's date uh, february 7 2013 also, you'll get all my future courses for one flat fee. You'll never have to pay for more training again. Now, what does that mean? That means six years from now, when Adobe upgrades to CS10, you're covered. You won't have to buy more videos, unlike other websites where they charge you per month or per year. Mine is a flat fee bundle package for all current and lifetime videos. Anyway, enough of that. So let's scroll down here. And I'm going to go here to Matt Porterfield's website. Now, pay attention to this here. This is kind of interesting. So this is this is basically his two about an archive. So here's my archive and here's my about. Okay, and I'm going to go back and click here and go back home. So if I resize this, what will happen? The first thing that's going to change are these menu choices. And again, this is totally based on your client's needs and how, how you as a designer want to redesign this page. So the second I go into, say, a laptop, 13-inch monitor size, menus change up on top. They go from here embedded to up on top. As I go further, further down, you'll notice eventually that things start, the picture gets smaller, the logo staying the same, the logo is actually floating in place here, and it hovers over to be alpha transparency. So this would be an example of a mini iPad size. Here's my iPad size. Here's my, 
here's my uh, maybe 13 inch monitor size and here's my full size. So it's totally responsive design and that's done and that's obtained guys with media queries. So I'm going to make a media query stud and stud at out of you guys and gals. Now I just want to show you one of my favorite sites here. This we make products work website. So I'm going to click right here. Now this is kind of interesting what they do here. So if I this is my full screen model again and again pay attention to the menus up on top here how these are going to change. So what they chose to do is once I go down to say a 13 inch monitor laptop size, the only thing they're doing is reducing the size of their H1 and their H2 deck. Everything else is pretty much remaining intact. As I get smaller, then menu choices change. Now this is similar to a menu that you would see in jQuery mobile. And if you haven't taken my jQuery mobile site, I highly suggest you do so. And also again, sign up for my all access pass PSA. As I get smaller with this, it basically goes down and down. Now, what I found out about this site is they technically don't really have an iPhone size unless this is this is probably the iPhone size here. But see, I'm I'm viewing this at a larger monitor size, so this is 1270 by 7040 pixels. So basically, you guys can see this better. So this is their iPhone size here. Okay, so basically, very good job on how they decided to do this. Now, media queries, you can have as many media queries to satisfy the width of your layout. Now, here's how this works if you want to take a note on this. Now, of course, if you're watching this on Udemy, which of course you are, to the top right-hand corner, there's a place for writing notes to yourself. So I highly suggest you benefit from that. Also, there's a tab called Extras if you want to download any of my videos to your computer because sometimes as you're traveling you might not have web access. That's a good idea to be able to do with Udemy videos is download them to your computer. So we're going to basically go through our next step is Dreamweaver, defining a site in Dreamweaver. Again, I can't ever overemphasize enough how important it is to basically build a site using Dreamweaver because Dreamweaver will do all the heavy lifting for you. So we're going to get deep into media careers starting with defining a site in Dreamweaver in our next video.